Alrighty, welcome one and all to Brush Hour on this fine Wednesday morning where I am. Could be evening wherever you are. Tell us in the chat where you are watching from. Uh, folks, thanks for joining me. We are today going to be looking at some drawing in Adobe Fresco, or what I should say is some painting, because what we're going to be doing is we are going to be emulating uh, some natural media brush strokes that, uh, when I say emulating, I'm talking about brush strokes that look and feel like uh, gouache in this case, or maybe acrylic. So, um, and this is something that I love to show people that is possible in Fresco with multicolor swatches. The magic of multicolor swatches is never ending. We're always talking about these things. And yet, a lot of people are unaware that they even exist, or if they know they exist, they think, what am I supposed to do with these things? And so, today I'll show you one of the things you can do with these that is pretty cool. Okie dokie. Alrighty, let's say hi to some folks. I see you're from New Jersey. What's up, Kathleen? Nice to see you. I used to live in New Jersey, actually. I lived in Morris Plains for about two years. Um, and uh, I see Robert is here. What's up, Robert and Sean and Vanessa and uh, Norsh and Bliss and uh, who else is here? Kathleen. Oh, I just said hi to you. Hi, sorry. Andreas and... Uh, Nessa. Hey, nice to see you, Nessa. Cody, what's up? Cody and I just did a great show yesterday. It was so much fun. Drawing pigs who like to bake. Of all things, right? Um, why don't we get started here? I'm going to pop on over to Fresco here, and um, I've got a little sketch up here on the screen. And uh, pardon me, I just got to switch over here to... Uh, there we go, my iPad. Um... I've got a little sketch up here on the screen. Uh, this is going to be a little scene of a woman standing at uh, some fancy kind of beach house situation, looking out over the water. Um, you'll notice that I was using the perspective tools here in Fresco. They're so wonderful. I just used a simple one point perspective grid. If you all are interested in knowing how to set these kinds of things up, well, it's very easy. What you do is, and I'm just gonna turn on my touches here so you can see everything clearly. But when I start drawing, I might turn them off again just because it's hard for me sometimes to see my brush when I have a big blue dot following me around on the screen, I'm sure you understand. But now when I tap on the screen, you can see what I'm doing. Um, as you know, on the iPad, there's no hover state, so you don't know where I'm going if I don't show you, right? So I'm going to go on up to this little area right here, and to the right there is a nice little grid right there. See that? So what that is, is our friendly alignment guides menu. You'll notice that I have alignment guides turned on right here. I have the grid turned on right here. When I turn it on, I have perspective selected for my grid type. And I have a one point vanishing, uh, one point uh, perspective grid set up, one vanishing point. You can see that over here, this little gray dot right there with all the lines originating from that dot and radiating outwards. And uh, what I did was I just set that up easy breezy. And here we are now, ready to go. Um, if you wish, you can snap to grid axis for drawing, which means Every line I draw is going to automatically snap to that wonderful grid. Isn't that nice? Makes it easy. It's like cheating, folks. All right, now we're going to turn that off, though, because I'm not going to be using that right now. I'm just going to have that perspective sitting there in the background. I'm going to reduce the opacity a little bit. I can still see it very faint. And we're going to also take our little sketch here, and we're going to reduce its opacity because it's time for us to get to the important stuff. In order to make this illustration, what I want to do is paint it. And I want my brush strokes to feel like they are the real deal, okay? Um, what I mean is I want them to feel like I'm using real paint and you can see that paint on the surface of the paper in all its glory. I don't want the color to be perfectly flat. I want there to be a little texture. I want there to be little subtle variations in the color. Do you see what I'm saying, folks? Does this make sense? Okie dokie. All right, and so that's what we want to do. Now, in order to achieve this, 
I'm going to use multicolor swatches, okay? Um, Cody, yes, my camera is off. I apologize for that. Um, and I don't know what happened, but in my in my Wirecast settings, just not to get too technical here, uh, the camera on that scene refuses to be recognized. I've had this happen a few times before with past um, files in Wirecast, and what I have to do is just rebuild them from scratch. And uh, since I discovered that that was happening only a few minutes before beginning the stream, I can't fix it. So I apologize, everybody. You can't see my face, but you know that's maybe that's a good thing. Um, okay. Vanessa has a question. Will isometric grids be added soon, Kyle? Vanessa, that's a good question, and it's one that I have too. Will they? I don't know. I have been requesting them myself internally, to be honest. And uh, I know that all these features, everything we always release, you know, takes a lot of time and a lot of work. So um, I think that would be coming along sometime in the future, since I make a lot of noise about it. Um, but I can't tell you when, all right? So let's just keep mentioning it. And in the meantime, if you would be so kind, I'm just gonna jump back to my home screen here for a second. I want you to take a look at this. Uh, right up here, where it says new and upcoming features, you just tap on that uh, and scroll on down to the bottom. You'll see this suggest features right here. So if you would be so kind as to suggest that feature and get your friends to do the same, the more attention we get to these features that you all want, the faster they get implemented. Okay, that's just the way it goes. Um, and thank you, Annika, for that kind comment about the drawing uh, yesterday on Cody's stream. I do appreciate it. Multicolor swatches. Let's go ahead and make one. All right, on a fresh layer here, what I'm going to do is first show you a couple of brushes that I like to use for, for, the, for making these specific kinds of brush marks. One of them is in the painting category in Fresco, and that is the block stain brush right here. One of the things that's great about this brush is that if you just select a color and start painting with it, it already has some nice bits in there that are kind of unpredictable and, and sort of special and different looking, right? See that? Um, now that's a function of how the brush was designed and we're taking advantage of some dual brush action in there as well as a texture and so on. Um, that's one of the brushes I like to use with multicolor squash, uh, swatches when we get to it. Uh, not multicolor squashes, those are fun to eat but not to paint with, though I haven't tried it. Another one is the canvas brush right here. Can make that a lot larger. And I like this brush because it's got that canvas texture and also it does respond to pen pressure for opacity and all that loveliness. All right. You throw a multicolor swatch in there and you've got some pretty hot action. Okay. Um, okay, moving on. The other one I really love to use is this wet bristle brush down here. This one is quite nice for more of the same, okay? Now, I'm gonna pop over to the Spring 2019 brush set. The Spring 2019 brush set, which may have actually been the Summer 2020 brush set. Uh, sorry, Summer 2019 brush set. The reason I say that is sometimes I design these brushes and then they actually get released one, uh, one quarter later, one season later. So if you don't see spring 2019, um, you look for summer 2019, you should find this brush. And the brush is called Atlas, right here. Hey, this brush, it's a great one for this, all right? And its cousin, Atlas Brush CD, is tremendous for this. And I'll, it's probably the brush I'm gonna use the most in this illustration. Now you know, these are the brushes I like, okay? But everything works great. This is for a very specific look okay and we're going to show you what that is here so i'm going to grab that block stain brush and by the way folks since i just made some marks with all these brushes i don't have to go hunting them down again because now here in fresco right at the top of your brush list we have recent brushes an unlimited list of brushes you have used in the document so that means i could use a hundred brushes in this illustration and if i'm always wondering when did i use that brush and 
What was it called again? I just go through this list and I will find what I need. So coming on back here to this block stain brush, I'm going to throw some nice pretty blue color down here. Then I'm going to use a darker blue with a little bit of purple baked in. Throw that in there. Okay, like that. And then maybe something a little lighter like this. Okay, and what you get is an area here that's mostly a single hue. I mean, if you're going to just squint and look at that, okay, get rid of all the details and all the nitty gritty business, it's kind of one in color, right? I didn't go straying too far from the base color, if you will, right? But what I can do now is take our handy dandy touch modifier right here. This is that circle that you can drag around in Fresco. And I'm left-handed, so I keep it down in the bottom corner right here so that I can easily touch it with my right thumb. If I hold this down with one finger and then with another finger, touch anywhere on the screen, I'm pulling up my eyedropper tool. But check this out. By doing those two actions together, I have created a multicolor swatch. I've now selected multiple colors, right? And if you look carefully over here at my uh, swatch for my color, it has more than one color in it. So now when I paint with it, look, multiple colors in the same brush stroke, okay? And there you go. You can try sampling different areas for different results. I love that one. Okay, now I really like that. Why don't we try it with the Atlas Brush CD? This is that brush I was telling you about um, that is so good for this. And look at that. Seeing all those subtle variations within the brush stroke itself. Okay, as I pull it along there and just kind of scrub along with it like that. Makes it so much more realistic. It's like you can see bristles pulling the paint, little shadows and highlights and whatnot. You know, and because it's got this sort of a, um, a less, it's not like the paint is really raised up on the surface. It doesn't have an impasto kind of look. This to me feels a lot like um, we're using something along the lines of like say gouache, right? Or acrylic. Really lovely. All right, now, there you go. Now, just for fun, why don't we take a look at some other brushes with it so you see what I mean. These are the reasons I like these brushes, like Wet Bristle, for example. Ooh, see that? With every brush stroke, I can see those little variations in the color. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. You got a, a area right here along that edge that's darker right along the edge like the paint got pushed out to the border of the brush stroke there so cool all right you can see the great potential that is here with multicolor swatches so now that i have this swatch you might be thinking yeah well but great what if i don't want to paint with blue all day long not to worry this is what makes these so amazing i open up my color panel and i have here hsb sliders and i'm going to keep those open and now what i can do is drag and change the hue right the saturation the brightness same multicolor swatch but I've changed all of these nice properties, okay? So I'm retaining all those differences in the darks and the lights and the hues, but I'm just shifting them all to a different arrangement, which means you can paint with any colors you want and still have that cool multicolor effect. Okay, that's what makes this so powerful. Voila, got some questions here. These brushes would be really cool to get that faux oil effect, Zanaka. Yes, and do these change color using color dynamics? Claire, they do not. They do not. 
This is happening because of the multicolor swatch itself. There you go. Um, that's what's happening there. So, pretty neat. Uh, Laura likes the texture. Thank you. Yes, this is fun. Um, and there are so many options. I mean, I just showed you a few of the brushes that work for this, uh, but there are many. And now I want to get to some painting. So I'm going to probably be using primarily this wet brush, bristle brush and then this, um, probably this uh, Atlas brush CD. Might use the Atlas brush and come back. By the way, look here. All those swatches are still here. Multicolor swatches. They are memorized by Fresco. They're right here for me to grab anytime I want them. Good to go. Look at that. Great for lettering too, right? Look at that, you can do this. Hello. Doesn't that look cool? Pretty fancy. Um So why don't we why don't we do this? Why don't we get to some painting? I think the first thing I'll do is lay in a color for the sky. So I'm gonna make that a bit greener. I mean, I kinda want this to be like sort of a really early morning kind of a situation. So almost like a greenish yellowy kind of deal. Something like that, maybe. Lower that saturation, make it a bit brighter. That feels pretty nice. Um, and I'm gonna just take this layer and drag it behind my sketch. Okay, and delete these, don't need them. All right, let's paint some sky. Now, lots of options here. I could use this Atlas brush. I could use the Atlas brush CD. I could use the block stain brush. I think I'm gonna go for the wet bristle and just see what happens. And I'm gonna make it big. You can also do this. You can long tap and you can punch in a specific number for the size of your brush. Look at that, that looks nice. I think I'll just come in here. Look at, ah. Oh. I love that I can create these patterns. In the sky using this technique. Well, let's turn off the sketch. I'm gonna turn off the grid too for just a moment so you can really see how that looks, okay? See all that nice variation, pulling those bristles along. Feels so good. All right, so turn our sketch back on. And I think for the water, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna just go ahead and make a selection and paint inside of that selection. And I'm feeling this brush right now. I'm feeling it. Maybe I'll stick with that brush. Do I want to go for that multicolor swatch I was using earlier? Might look nice. Let's see how that feels. Ooh, yeah, that looks pretty nice. And then I'm going to just hit it again. Make myself a new multicolor swatch right there. Look at that. Paint with that. That feels pretty good. Oh, I made a mistake, y'all. <laughs> I was painting on the sketch layer. Come on, Kyle. Get your act together, buddy. There we go. Oh, so much better. I was wondering why it was so desaturated and so light. I was like, what's going on? How was my painting? Now I know what was happening. I was just being foolish. But there you go. I like it. All right, I'm gonna go to my selection options, invert my selezione, 
<clears throat> come over here. And take this same color. I'm going to go revisit this sky. I'm going to revisit it. Because I want it to be even lighter than it already is. So that's too bright. Let's see. Push it more towards yellow, reduce the saturation, and now hit it again. That feels pretty good. I like that. I love leaving in a couple of little bits of green there. That's nice as well. Deselect. That feels good. All right, now you'll notice I have some sand down at the bottom. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and sort of just freehand that. Just freehand that. Let's see how that feels. And I'm gonna use that Atlas Brush CD to do this. And I'm just gonna warm up this color a little bit and bring that darkness down just a hair. And I just want to see what that feels like color wise. That's kind of nice. Yeah, I like that. I don't want it to be too crazy. And I'll use a smaller version of this brush. And don't forget, you can actually edit your brushes. I'm coming into Shape Dynamics changing the minimum diameter to smaller. That'll give me more control. Can also decrease the spacing a little bit. Same deal. Come along here. And tighten this up a bit here. There we go. Nice. And let's go back to that multicolor squash we had, uh, squash we had a minute ago right here. And I'm just going to size my brush down. Come in here and just clean this up. See how painty this is? How painty it is? It's like pa painty, is that a word? Am I making up words? So painty. Are y'all fans of David Hockney? I'm starting to just get a Hockney vibe from this. I'm a fan. I don't know what you all like, but I do like me some Hockney. Very, very much. Let's hide our sketch for a moment. See how we're how we're looking here. Oh yeah, that is some painty goodness right there, folks. Painterly, painty, painterly. All right. 
180. Come on back, Sketch. Come play with us. Okay, now let's use our delightful polygonal lasso tool. And let's give ourselves a layer right here in front of the water and all that business. And we're just going to do this. I'm just going to go one, hold down, touch modifier, and come straight on down. That's going to ensure the selection I make is um, either perfectly vertical or perfectly horizontal. Pro tip for you there. Pro tip. I'll come back to this swatch and I'm going to change our color now to much brighter and much less saturated. And then We'll take our brush and we're going to come back to our settings and reset the brush to its normal settings and then decrease the spacing by a value of one down to four. Increase the size of the brush so it's big. And then just come in here and, and just paint this like this, bam. And I'm gonna hit it a few times. It's got some transparency in it, as you can see. Now I'm gonna deselect and let's hide that sketch again. And let's just come in here and enjoy that. So what I hope you can all see is these subtle variations. Look here in this corner right here. See that? That's what I'm talking about. Look at this. You got some of that sky coming through. This is so fun. That's what I'm talking about, folks. All right, now, back to it. Back to it. Got our figure there, which I want to take care of. But first, I want to hit this um, this roof above her. So I'm going to do that. And I'm actually going to do it on a layer beneath our wall that we just painted because what I want to happen is for <clears throat> is for the um, the figure to be able to have her head pop up in front of that layer. And so it's important for me to think about these things, you know, think about the layer order and how you want to make that work for yourselves. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the saturation and I'm going to push Um, I could go warmer or I could go cooler. I think I'm going to go a little bit warmer here and increase the darkness here. I wanna, don't want to go too saturated. I want to go crazy. But, uh, this is going to be an area that's in shadow, right? So just trying to sort of hit that sweet spot right there. And then just knock that in. Oh, I don't even want to mess with that. I just want to leave that alone. That, that felt great right there. Just you knock the color in and leave it. It's so fresh. I love it when that works out like that. Got lucky that time. I'm going to lock that layer transparency. That means I can only a, a change the pixels that are there. Okay, folks? You can only change the pixels that are there. I can paint outside of them, but you won't see anything happen. Come back to that swatch we are using a moment ago, right? For our wall, because that's going to be facing the light here. And there you have it. 
coming back up to this other layer. Just gonna slap that selection right there and say bye-bye. So we can see that beach coming through, right? Excelente. All right, let's hide that sketch again. It's fun to look at it without the sketch and it's important to do so because remember, if you're not gonna keep the sketch there visible, you wanna see how things are looking, okay? Very good, all right, and back we go. And now I can take this opportunity with this layer where the uh, house is right there to lock layer transparency there and just select this area where this back side of the column of the house is not facing the uh, Sure, right? Let me just do that. Just knock that in. There we go. Lovely, lovely. Lovely. So, I've got about 16, 15 minutes left. All right, what can I accomplish in 15 minutes? I think I can get the figure done. I think I can get that window done. Why don't we start with something that's a bit more difficult? And that would be the figure. And with the figure, I kind of just want to paint it. You know, I don't want to try and... use selections and all that, I could. But I'm tempted to just, just go for it, you know? So let's give that a shot. Now, with the Atlas brush, I should be able to come in here and I should be able to take my shape dynamics and make that go even smaller with pen pressure, like that. And um, we can take our Multicolor swatch goodness right here. Reduce that saturation, move it a bit warmer right here. Bring that on down, okay? And make my brush smaller. Test that out, see how that feels. Yeah, feels pretty good. Okay. And uh, what I wanna do here is just just paint some of that some of that hair right there. All right? And my, my goal is to is to use as few brush strokes as possible. It's kind of what I'm I'm aiming for here. Okay? And then just switch it up. And just sort of come in here and that, that face right there. I got arm here he's holding that cup of joe or tea I don't know what it is what's she drinking folks I don't know maybe she likes to put a little sauce in there she might have maybe it's a little uh, coffee with just a little kick Irish coffee. I don't know. I don't know who this person is, okay? I'm not gonna tell you what her habits are. Pop that brightness up, reduce that saturation, cool it down, right? Or do we wanna go dark with the mug? Yeah, I kinda wanna go dark. Let's go dark. We want some contrast, okay? That's what we want. And I'm gonna switch it up to that canvas brush, which I know is gonna be, yeah, that feels good. Smaller brush, smaller brush. 
Get in here. No, let's let's throw it out here. Let's throw it out here. Right there. She's just enjoying that coffee. Okay. There she goes. Don't you love how Apple just like kills my my stream right in the middle there? Telling me to go to sleep. I don't want to sleep just because you do, computer. But folks, do you see the beauty of this? How this works? So great. Right? And it's it's remembering what I did. It's remembering these these little swatches here. It's like my, my friend. Fresco's my friend. It's saying, uh, don't you worry, I got you. If you you got a a color you used earlier and you forget it, I got you. You want to use a multicolor again? I got you. Fresco. Goodbye, sketch. I'm just gonna paint now. Oh, I love seeing the paint. No sketch. You can really feel it. Looks like paint, folks. Paint with the power of undo. And I can even do stuff like this. I come in here and just cheat and be like, eh, I want to erase some of that mug. Why not? You know what I'm saying? I can do that. But I'm going to switch my eraser up to the old rubber eraser. Don't forget, you can use different erasers in Fresco. Got about 10 of them in there at least. Play around with those so I can get all fancy with that erasing. It's got a little texture there with that eraser. Delightful. Now we're going to use a color that is not located anywhere else in the document. This is one of those tricks you can use, right? You make yourself a color that you don't see anywhere else. And what does that do? What does that do? It makes it possible for you to have an area in uh, the painting where you force people to look at it because they don't see that color anywhere else. It just happens to be in this one area. And that gives it a special attraction for the eye. It makes people go, huh? What's that over there? And then, and then you've got them. See? So what's the problem with this? You, someone out there, tell me. You tell me. I know what it is. Brightness. The answer is brightness. You need contrast. See? Without that contrast, that shirt, it's just the same value as the arm. That doesn't work. Nope. So fix it. Don't just let it sit there being bad and doing the wrong thing. Fix it. Okay, and there you go. There's our person looking out over the water. <sighs> Having deep thoughts, questioning all her life decisions. Uh, nope, just kidding. I'm not, I'm not gonna make this dark or sad, okay? We don't need this in our lives. We need good things, happy things, happy thoughts, right? Take a page out of the Bob Ross book. Think happy thoughts. Oops, cancel lasso. Zing! Zong, I gotta fix that area there. All right, now we have a figure. We have a character, a figure in the, in the piece. Why don't we just take care of that window while we're here? Throw the sketch back on. Okay. Same deal. Use my polygonal lasso tool. I've got it all mapped out thanks to those perspective grids. Made things so easy for me. Multicolor swatches, remembering where I've been. They know what I've been doing. Uh oh, they know if you've been naughty or nice. We come over here to our recent brushes and we say Atlas Brush CD. Thank you very much. I think I'll use that. Oh, look at that hit right there. Don't mess with it, Kyle. Let it be. 
Don't mess with it. Don't mess with it. And then, Kablamo. And down we go, and out we go. Little pane of glass right here. And guess what I'm gonna do? I know, don't think I'm crazy. Gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna hit it with that greenish yellow color. Why? Because it's the sky. Did I mean for that to rhyme? Of course I did, I don't mess around. It's the sky color and what do I do? I do that, I hold down my touch modifier so I can erase some bits, right? And then we can play with layer blending modes. Maybe we can do a little, uh, hard light action see what that does overlay might be kind of cool yeah leave it like that who cares um so what who cares that's fred armison doing joy behar in the view so it's my impression of somebody doing an impression of somebody else so what who cares all righty, now you know what we're missing. We gotta, we gotta add that last little thing, that thing that makes it special. Um, and I think, uh, well, one thing we need to do is, we need to do this, we need to, we need to come back to our little window here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna merge this down. No, I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna group these bad boys. And I'm going to duplicate that group. Um, merge layers. No, I can't do it. Ah, Kyle, come on, buddy. All right, let's let's double click into that and let's do this. Lock my layer transparency. And from this corner, just darken it. There, that's better. And then come on down here and do the opposite. We're gonna lighten this. Better, more three-dimensional, right? Last details, are you ready? Coming back to the canvas brush and coming back to the hair color, we're gonna jump back out here. We're going to make a layer and here they come, here they come. Birds, smaller brush. Gonna hide my touches like I told you I might, right? Why? Because I need to be able to, um, ah, I need to be able to see my brush. So there we go. There are the birds out there over the water and we have an illustration okay with a painterly look to it painterly 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 that's the whole point of this um you just can't achieve this in any other application you have to use adobe fresco to pull this off and it's so cool you know, you could, you could print this and show it to somebody and be like, look, I painted this and they're not going to know it's digital. Not with all that beautiful stuff you have going on in there, right? Now, if I had time, I'd add a couple more colors in the sky and make it more hoppery, um, you know, or more, uh, more like our pal uh, David Hockney as well, you know, Hopper, Hockney. Two H's. This has a flavor of both. I would I would say in terms of just sort of subject matter and approach. Um, let me go back to that, that 
area right here because I've got a minute. I've got a minute. So why not just do it? I'm going to get picky and just make this shape make sense. Make that make sense. And make this make sense. And while I've got that hair color here, I can do things that are like really nice, like one little thing like that, a little smaller. One little thing like that. It's always nice to just do a little something here and there. See that? Treat yourself. Well, there you go, gang. What do you think? Fun? Thanks for hanging out. See you next time. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. Remember to be kind, and I'll say ciao for now.